probably a lot of you is using some kind of media server at home. And if you have, it's most likely to be Plex or Ambi. But there is an open source alternative to both of them that really does respect your privacy. So today we'll be looking at Jellyfin, how to install it inside Docker, on Synology, and also how to integrate inside Home Assistant. Long time ago, very long time ago, at the time when the hardware encoding on Synology was free and included inside the basic Plex system, I did use Plex. But a lot of things have changed and I didn't like the way how Plex was transforming. I didn't like the idea of using online accounts. So at that time I removed Plex from my system and started using something else on my Synology. After a couple of years, when I started playing with Home Assistant and when I've seen a lot of integrations in regard to Plex, but also MB, I decided to give MB a try. And MB is a really nice media server. But both MB and Plex unfortunately have some of the functionality locked behind the payware, where you have to pay for the functionality that in my opinion is really strange. For example, I don't see a reason to pay any of those software companies to access my media on my local network. And most of them do require some kind of payment if you are using their apps. Sure, you can do it via the web or you can do it via the Chromecast devices, but not via the app. I know that that money goes towards the development. But then again, we also have Jellyfin. The functionality of Jellyfin is pretty much the same or au pair with the functionality of Plex and Ambi. Sure, there may be some minor details or minor functionalities that Jellyfin doesn't have, but more or less everything you can find in MB and Plex, you can also find in Jellyfin too. But what I care, it does support. Those are movies, shows and of course music. But enough talk, let's jump straight into the installation and configuration of Jellyfin. In my case, I will be doing it in a Synology, but you can use the same installation method on any system that supports Docker. If you prefer a written guide, I will be leaving a link to Jellyfin's Synology installation guide, which actually is just a couple of screen captures. And on the same link, you can find the container, which is the Docker installation guide, which is simple. Just use pull command to pull the image, make a path or folder where you want to keep the configuration and cache files, and then run this command, but also don't forget to change the path where your media files are. If you're running Synology, we can do it through the UI. Go to Docker, go to Registry, type in Jellyfin, and this link here, Jellyfin slash Jellyfin, should be the one that you need to download and later on activate or install. Double click it. After a couple of seconds, depending on the speed of your internet, the speed of the system, the speed of the world itself, you will be presented with the option on what version to download. I would suggest that you go with the latest version. Click on Select, and that should be it the image will be downloaded in the background. While we are waiting for the image to be downloaded, let's go to the file station. If you do not have already media folder, I suggest that you create one single media folder. Why single media folder? Because it will be much easier for you later on to manage all your media. Inside the media folder, I have created dummy music, movies and shows subfolder. Remember, this media folder needs to be shared folder. If you haven't created already one, click on create, create new shared folder, type in the name, let's call it media2, media folder. I will also disable recycle bin. The reason why I disable recycle bin on those folders because those folders actually do not contain any important data, at least for me. Sure, I do have all my CDs ripped inside the music folder, but I also have them as original inside boxes. Click on next, 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 and we are done. Determine what will be your user permissions and click apply. We now have media2 folder. And once again, inside that media2 folder, you can create subfolders such as music, movies, books, etc. And then inside those folders, you can just create subfolders for movies, music, and TV shows. Since the Jellyfin has been installed, we can click on launch. We will be selecting Docker host network. The name of the container will be 
jellyfin let's remove this one here everything here will be left as is of course you can change the port the default port is 8096 in the advanced settings we do not have to set up anything but you can click and check if everything here is okay click on next and we will be adding now a folder we will map our media folder with folder also called media that means that any file we insert or any folder we create inside the media folder on our Synology will also be available to the media folder inside the Jellyfin. Click on next, verify that everything here is correct and click done. Synology will now start this Docker. It will take a couple of seconds for everything to load up nicely. In next step, we will do basic configuration of Jellyfin. I will not be going into too much detail. I leave that up to you. Next step for you, as I mentioned, is configuration of the Jellyfin. You need to type in the IP address of your host, in my case, this Synology, and the port is 8096. This is the first page that you will see after you start the system. Select your display language, click on next. Default username is root and actually don't do it. You can actually leave this main password blank. I do recommend that you keep the root account and use root account for the internal server configuration. But in order to do that, I also suggest that you use some kind of a strong password. I will later on show you how you can create users and I always create additional user for home assistant. So we will also do that. Click on next. And in this step, we can add media library. Click on plus, select content type. And as you can see, we have option to add movies, music, shows, books, photos, music videos, mixed films and programs. Let's start with movies. Display name will be movies. We will then select a folder. This folder should be under media because this is where we mapped everything, movies. And I will click OK here. The logic says that in the future, if I want to add movies, all the movies should be inside this subfolder. Now we can do some basic configuration of this movies folder. For example, preferred download language, English, country, Croatia, in my case. We can prefer embedded titles over file names, disable different types of embedded subtitles. I will allow all. Enable real-time monitoring. This will allow us to automatically add any new files or make any changes to the files that are already on the find system. Automatically add to collection. If there are more than two movies, it can be added to collection. For example, if you have a lot of Marvel movies, they can all be added as a Marvel collection. Star Wars, Star Wars collection, Harry Potter, etc. Metadata downloaders, MovieDB and Open Movie Database. Automatically refresh metadata from the internet. Never every 30, 60, 90 days. For example, you can say every 30 days or never. If you want to use metadata savers, I don't use it. I'll leave this as is. You can tick save artwork into media folders. I will not do that. Enable chapter images extraction. This is actually a nice thing. If, for example, you are watching a show or a movie, it can automatically create chapters. And if you enable this functionality here, you will see a small icon for each of the chapters or small image. Let's tick this box here. Yes. And let's also tick extract chapter images during the library scan. This means that the initial library scan will take a long time, but since this library is almost empty, I don't care. Click on OK. And now let me quickly add everything else. Media library. And this is it. We now have movies, music and shows. Click on next. Preferred metadata language is English, but for country, I want to use Croatia. Next. Allow remote connections to this server. I will leave this box ticked and I will not be ticking enable automatic port mapping. Next. And we are done. If you haven't changed the username, default one is root and type in the password that you are using. And remember, you really should use password. Click on sign in. And of course, it will take some time for all of the data to be scanned and that your library is imported inside the Jellyfin. Until then, let's check at the configuration for additional users. Let's click on this burger menu. Let's go to the dashboard. 
Here you will see all the things that you can configure on your system, but currently we are interested in users. Click on plus sign, let's add a new user, bearded, password. You can select to which libraries this user has access rights. For example, movies, music, and of course, we all know that I don't watch shows, I have poor, no, no, uh, but yeah, there may be some cases when you don't want all users to see all the folders. In my case, I want to see everything because I'm a control freak. Click on save. And after the user has been configured, it opens screen like this, where you can further configure the rights for this user. Allow remote connection. Let's leave this as is. Allow this user to manage server. So what the idea is that actually you can have a root user, but you can also create for yourself additional admin user and allow this user to manage server. But also it's very good idea to have different account for administration and configuration and additional account that is used only to watch media. So I will not be ticking this box here. Allow all of this and allow everything except for transcoding. Allow users to create and join groups, Allow media deletion. If you want, you can give some or all or none of the users this ability. Go through other settings. And one of the things that you may decide to enable, which with minus one it is disabled, is how many users can have failed login attempts before the user is locked out. If the setting is at minus one, it means that it will never be disabled. If it's at three, it means that after three bad logins, the account will be disabled. Access, enable access to all libraries, parental controls if you want to set any parental controls, and of course password to change or replace or reset the password. And while you are blinking, I also created one additional user. This one will be used by the Home Assistant. In order to return to the main screen or screen, type in on the Home button here. And as you can see, my whole library is already imported. We have movies, music, shows, and also one collection. The collection is Attack on Titan. If you haven't seen that movie, it's a Korean movie, it's really awesome. <laughs> Go check it out. Of course, you can play with the setup of the screen, what you want to see on the screen, how you want it to look, etc. But as I mentioned, we will not be looking at those settings here. We are interested in integration with Home Assistant. And for the integration with Home Assistant, we already have everything we need. This is the IP address and the port of the Jellyfin server, username and password. And that's it. In Home Assistant, go to Settings, Integrations, click on Add Integration, type in Jelly, select Jellyfin, input the URL. It should also include HTTP, of course, if you're not using HTTPS, full path or URL username and password and click on submit. One other thing you may notice here that it also found some devices that you may or may not already have inside your system. This is the Jellyfin itself. It also detected my WebOS TV and one of my Sonoff speakers. And if we check out here, we can see that we have two devices, one service and four entities. Let's look at all of them. For the devices, we have this Sonos speaker and the WebOS LG TV. One service is Jellyfin service, where we can see how many people are watching. And for four entities, we have all the entities that are related to the Jellyfin integration. Let's check what happens inside Home Assistant if we, for example, play something on the web browser on the PC. Let's click on Shows, select Silo, and the show started to play. Inside Home Assistant, if we click on this Jellyfin information, sensor Jellyfin, we will see that there is a one person watching, but actually we don't know what is that user watching. But then we also have this Chrome, Media Player Chrome, where we see that something is playing. If we click there, we can see that somebody is watching Freedom Day. This is the title of the series Silo on the Apple TV, first episode and you can see currently playtime, but that's not all. And here is the Sonos speaker, LG WebOS TV and the Chrome. We also have information that somebody is watching something and we know that this one watching is actually this web browser playing Freedom Day, Silo, Season 1, Episode 1. 
But what if, for example, you want to play something and you do not want to use Jellyfin web interface or don't want to use either Android, iOS or PC desktop app? You can do it directly from Home Assistant. For example, for music, click on three dots here, select Browse Media, go to the Music folder, we have one artist, Cesaria Evora, select something from her and click on Play. As you may have heard, but actually I will be muting that part here because I don't want to have another copyright strike. You can directly play media from here. Same goes, for example, for clicking three dots, browsing media on the TV, selecting movies, Attack on Titan and the first part of Attack on Titan. And the movie started playing on the TV. And by the way, yes, if you are wondering, it also works with the Chromecast for Google TV or Android TVs too. For that, you can install the Jellyfin app. And in terms of Android TV remote, the video that I did last week, unfortunately, I still haven't figured out the Jellyfin code that is used to start from within Home Assistant with the service called the Jellyfin app itself. By the looks of it, it currently is limitation of the Android app, but I think the devs are working on it. And as you can see, it's really easy to play anything on the media players that have been automatically added to the Jellyfin. You just click three dots, click browse media, select what you want to play and play it on that device. But of course, with the media tab in Home Assistant, you also have access to those files there too. Go to the media tab, Click on Jellyfin, select music and play it. It can be played on any media player you have added in your system, including M5 stack Atom Echo, which is still here for testing voice capabilities of home assistants. By the way, if you go to HACS, integrations, search for explore and download repositories, Type here Jelly, you will find Jellyfin integration for Home Assistant. Actually, this integration, as far as I have seen from the documentation, does more or less the same thing as the internal Home Assistant integration. There is something listed here that I haven't tested, and that is using upcoming media card. But that repository has been archived, and here on the list you will not find any information about the support for Jellyfin itself. So while, yes, there is an HACS component, I do recommend that you stick with the internal integration inside Home Assistant. If you are happy with Plex and Ambi, why not? If you are happy, continue using them. But I do dare you to try and see if Jellyfin does have all the things that you have been used to inside Plex and inside Ambi, and it does have it free of charge. That is open source project. And of course, you are more than welcome to do any kind of contribution. And you can contribute to the Jellyfin by coding, translating or other. And for other, you can write documentation, help people troubleshoot or help pay the expenses. So yes, you may do even monetary contribution to the Jellyfin itself. But Jellyfin doesn't lock you out of your own media. If you have large, for example, music collection, it doesn't require you to pay to access your media. And it also doesn't force you to use any kind of a cloud account. So consider Jellyfin as a possible substitute of whatever media server you are currently using. But one important thing is that I want to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become my YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. And also thanks to each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to contribute or, sorry, support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below or going to my merchandise store and buy something there. But nevertheless, I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have